name's Mila. I, this summer I was in the communicating topics in earth and space science program with Dr. Lau. Um, and my presentation is going to be about the role of art in communicating astrobiology and then a bit of a look into my final project for the program. Art has always been a part of our fascination with space. It can express the wonder and awe we feel, and it can show us the beauty of space. Um, and primarily art is used, I'm sh as I'm sure we're all aware, to communicate emotions and sensations. This is on the left, the first art made in space by cosmonaut Alexei Leonov in 1965. Um, he drew that while in orbit and then Eventually, it became the first draft of the painting to the right. Um, he called it Orbital Sunrise, and it's kind of an iconic picture. And while we can't necessarily learn a lot about space just by looking at this picture, we can get kind of a sense of the things that he was feeling because it's a very, um, not, it's, it's not like a photorealistic drawing. It definitely has a sense of interpretation of his experiences. And the use of art to kind of express excitement about space has certainly gone on long before that and continued since. Um, and a great example are these posters, the NASA travel posters. I'm sure many of you have seen them. Um, they've become very iconic. Uh, and I've always kind of been drawn to them. They have a sort of like whimsy and like strangeness to them that just make the planets that they show seem so interesting and appealing. But at the same time, all of them indicate um, either the presence of people or the presence of like buildings and engineering. And it kind of allows them to feel not only strange and foreign, but also accessible to us, which I think is a really great way to get people more interested in planetary exploration. Um, something I hadn't really thought about before, though, that occurred to me as I was trying to come up with a final project for my science communication program was that not only do they give this like interesting sense of emotion, but although these images are pretty simple, if you look at any one of them, you can actually learn quite a lot about like scientific information as well. So as an example, I want to go through this one with you guys. Um, this is the poster for Ceres. Uh, and I just want to take a minute and have everyone think for a second. Just look at the picture and imagine if you knew absolutely nothing about Ceres, or if you don't know anything about Ceres, um, like what would you be able to learn about it just from looking at this poster? you can just think about that for a second or put it in the chat. All right, um, keep thinking about it, but I'm gonna start going through it because we don't have a lot of time. Um, first, we can look at the phrases that are on the poster. Um, we see queen of the asteroid belt, uh, from this, we can infer that Ceres is the largest asteroid. Um, it can even be helpful for a lot of non-scientists to have this phrase, uh, like the asteroid belt and gateway to the outer solar system, because a lot of people who aren't familiar with space science don't really know the difference between asteroids and meteors. They might not even know that asteroids are in a certain part of the solar system, so this can help position series for them. Um, and the phrase last chance for water until Jupiter tells us one that there's water on Ceres, but also that there's some form of water on Jupiter as well. So we can actually kind of get even more information extrapolated from that. And then even looking further at the images in the picture, um, we see the water pump. This tells us that the water on Ceres is underground, not on the surface. Um, we see the people wearing astronaut helmets. 
um, which can tell us that Ceres has a very thin atmosphere or no atmosphere. And in the background, we can see the two mountains, which tells us something about the, ge the geography of Ceres. And so even just from this one fairly simple image, we can actually kind of learn a lot if we have never heard of Ceres or don't know much about it. Um, it can actually be a pretty effective form of science communication. That being said, there are some limitations. Um, first of all, most people are going to look at this and be like, oh, cool. And they're not going to spend as much time as I just did going through it and analyzing all the little bits. Um, that being said, it can still stick with people longer to have an image to associate things with rather than just like be told all of that information. And they might think, oh, that's interesting, but then they don't have anything to associate it with, so they forget it more quickly. Um, there are also some limitations just from like it being art and art has to look good and sound interest, like the catchphrases have to sound cool. Um, and sometimes that can lead to misleading suggestions. Um, Ceres is in the asteroid belt, but the phrasing queen of the asteroid belt does make it sound like it is an asteroid and it is technically a dwarf planet. Um, the two mountains in the background are also a bit misleading. They look really nice on the poster. They make the image look well balanced. Uh, in reality, Ceres has a pretty flat surface. It has one mountain on it. Um, and the colors are accurate for this poster from what I could tell in my brief research, but several of the other posters, if you read about the, the artists coming up with them, they'll just say, like, we just thought this color scheme would look cool. It's not necessarily what the planet would actually look like. Uh, that being said, I thought it was really interesting that I hadn't necessarily conceived before just how much these can not only get people excited about space, but share information about space. And I thought, um, Planetary science is something that has benefited a lot from art and the use of art, um, but astrobiology, not so much. A lot of the art that's used in astrobiology presentations does like end up being art of planets or more like bio biology related art. Um, so I was, in I decided that for my final project, I wanted to do a series of posters travel posters like the, the NASA ones, um, but focused on like uh, creating associations with the reasons why we think might, or why, sorry, the reasons why we think life might exist on other planets or certain other planets or bodies in our solar system. Um, I decided to start with Mars because, uh, pun intended, that's kind of the poster child of life in our solar system, uh, in our current search at least. Um, so I knew that I wanted to emphasize, first of all, that we're interested in discovering signs of past life on Mars and not necessarily current life. Um, and that the reason we think there could have been past life is because of evidence of past oceans. Uh, starting with that, I decided that I wanted to have the image of an astronaut in a cave shining his flashlight at the wall and there being fossils on the wall that are pretty recognizably um, marine life fossils or associated with marine life just to show that um, kind of past life idea and that it correlates to water. Uh, this is another example of it could be a little bit misleading in that from everything I've heard, we'd be looking for microbial past life on Mars, not large uh, like fish monster fossils. Um, but I believe that's the case of most bodies that we're looking at in the solar system right now. And if you have something that people can associate more, it might be better than just having a whole series of posters and there's like different microbes on all of them. Um, Okay, uh, after that, I was looking at national park travel posters. Um, 
as inspiration for like style because I don't really do this art style much. Uh, and what I noticed was even the ones that look like they have really nice gradients, like even the Grand Canyon sky, they don't actually use blending or shading much. It's all different colors that are just like put next to each other really nicely. So then I tried to make the background for my poster using that kind of in mind. Um, and continued on with the sketches. Uh, I wanted to, again, have sea life as the kind of idea. So shell fossils, fish bones, um, like trilobites and prehistoric, like Im images that are recognizably ancient life from Earth. So that, that can kind of reinforce that idea again. Um, and here's what I have so far. I really wish that I could show you guys like a, a completed final poster, but unfortunately I'm not done quite yet. Um, but I've learned a lot on the way as I've been making this. Uh, I have learned about balancing scientific accuracy and um, the effectiveness and memorability of what an image will tell people. Um, visual accuracy versus artistic like image. Uh, one of the things I'm having problem with having a problem with in this area is the fish fossil. Um, all of the pictures that I could find of fish fossils are like actually much darker than the surrounding rock, but then it looked like really different from the other fossils on there and it looked like it was jumping out a lot. So I'm still kind of figuring out how to do that. And then kind of in that same theme, as I mentioned, my normal art style is like not really the travel poster look. So I'm having a lot of fun kind of figuring that out and like learning new artistic skills. Um, and then just being able to have an excuse to refresh on stuff I already knew and learn a lot of new things about astrobiology and our search for life in the solar system has been really fun as I've been thinking about this poster, any future ones I would want to do for the series. Um, which brings me back to my final point, which is that although my talk has been all about the fact that art can communicate information and not just emotion, uh, space and astrobiology is really exciting and interesting and inspiring. And I don't want to give the impression that I'm saying art can only be useful to science because it can communicate information. Even art like this, where we don't learn much, can be really valuable in communicating the reasons why we do science and uh, help us learn more about ourselves and the human condition by how we engage with our discoveries. All right, thank you. Fantastic, great job, Mila. That's so incredible. I love where it's come so, so far. And I'm super excited to see the, the finished product when you get there. Um, and I love that you kind of, you shared with us that, that, that trade-off, because um, you know, when you're, you're creating artwork of any form to share science, you want to think about you know, how to get the science right but there's also a trade-off of kind of also, you know, embellishing a little bit, kind of exaggerating in ways that also engage a larger audience who maybe aren't as immediately specific to like some of the scientific ideas. So having giant fish fossils, like you said, on the wall on Mars, um, it might not seem as likely, but it's also possible. Um, I know Carol Cleland, the philosopher, she always loves to ask people like, what about whales on Europa? Um, a lot of us say probably not, but it's also, I think it's fun for people when they, they think about possible European life is think about like some giant swimming thing, a whale or a giant jellyfish or something. So I'm so glad you brought that up. Um, I'm gonna let some others ask questions first. I'll start with Sanjoy since I saw your hand first. Yeah, that is fantastic. There's a spot on my wall ready for your poster whenever you're ready. <laughs> I was wondering why is it in, in the travel posters that the colors, they don't mix, right? They kind of sharply defined colors. Why, why is that? What is that a certain style that's designed for travel posters? Do we connect more emotionally with it? Like, why is that style even the one used for travel posters? I'm not sure. That's a great question. Um, 
yeah I don't know I would I would be interested in knowing awesome Rajat you have a question I think yeah I have a comment to make so Amila great presentation love when art meets science and you rightly pointed out that there are very limited uh, uh, opportunities or people who are doing art in astrobiology. So I want to bring this to your notice that Earth and Life Science Institute in Tokyo offers a fellowship, especially for artists uh, who can go there and uh, interact with the scientists, especially in the planetary research and astrobiology research and develop their art with them. And it's a very good opportunity if you're looking to uh, do this in the future also. Thank you. Cool, thank you. Yeah, that sounds super cool.